It's 165 feet long. The walls inside are 125 feet. It's 11 and a half feet tall from the base of the building to the ground. It was the largest barn in the state of New Hampshire in the 1800s. And it's not Thursday. Massive is an understatement. All right, so myself and the one and only Faceless George are here today to shoot, video, document, and share with you what was the largest barn in the state of New Hampshire back in the 1800s. This thing was massive. We actually only have one picture taken way off in the distance from way back when, but it does give you a perspective of the size. So, the first thing we need to do, George, is measure it. Yeah, it's huge. So we're at 150 feet right there. Yep. And then we're gonna go to the inside of this wall, and then we'll uh, measure the width of the wall. 161. 161. And I'm gonna right. give you the height. And I gotta go up. What's that? What's the length so far? 161. No, 161. Right, and the thing is, up here, although you have the wall, this whole retaining wall is probably full of stone, because that's how you build a wall properly. For every one up, you'd build one out and then angle it down, so. But what you can see is really significant here. Call it a 165, easily. That is five feet longer than the width of a football field. Whoa. Okay, and then let's just measure the height again from up there, Charlie. Why don't you grab the end of this tape? I okay. think we're at 11 feet. So the height is, uh, 11 foot 6. 11 and a half feet. The walls inside, the inside are 125 feet. That is actually within two feet of the distance between home plate and second base. Walls being five foot wide, this building is 135 feet wide. Here I am, I'm saying to George, I hear, I can hear the snow melting. George, that's not snow melting. No, those are, um... Bugs. Yeah, those are the, uh, snow fleas, they call them. That is gross, and I'm sitting here filming in it. Well, I'll be moving along. Then I don't know. I just don't have bugs, man. Give don't me... Forget your cigars. Oh, you get yeah, priorities here. Thanks, FG. So the thing is absolutely massive. That's just the stonework, right? Never mind the structure that sat on top of it. And George and I were speculating about the rocks themselves and the fact for one square cubic foot of granite is... 150 pounds? Approximately 150 pounds of weight. Now, five foot by three foot by three foot. So what do you approximate that one stone on the top, George, to weigh? That's a lot of weight. So 100 times 3 is, is 3,000 pounds, 4,500 pounds. This one stone? Yeah, so, so etch that out and I'll say about 4,500 pounds for this stone. Two tons and a half. Yeah, and some two tons, about two tons per stone. That's one stone out of... If my math is right. Times 150, that's it. 4,500 pounds, two tons a piece. <laughs> Approximately two tons a piece. And it makes sense if you think about it. You just look at the mass of it. There's no way that uh, any one person could li lift this. It had to be done with oxen and levers and pulleys and... A lot of broken fingers. Yeah. And all the immigrants that they brought in from... The Irish. The Irish. Yeah. They lived here. They went up on the hill. They cut the stone. And as history lets us know, this building was in fact actually used for livestock. Down below there's enough space on its own and there's an entrance back this way where they would have brought the animals in and out of, you know, in from pasture and, and whatnot. George, you've left your cigar over there now. That's like a $6 roach, you don't want to lose that. 
And this is pretty uh, interesting. All these pillars on the inside, just for support. Look at that. They're all notched out, which is interesting because, oh, you know what? Were the notches in between here and there for separation or fencing? This is how they kept, this is the lower gate. So they would have pillars here and they would put gates up to keep the livestock from coming out. And this was the start of the gate. Right. The rest would have been gated by wood. Right, because you can see is this wall here. This is basically the final inside corner. And then out here leads to the exterior. There's also some, some evidence that there was a hinge there. You oh, can yeah. see the pin sticking out. Look at that, right inside the granite. Although on the outside of the wall, those are a lot of field stones that were probably pulled out from back there. This stuff, the majority of ins inside, George, has been split. Yeah, you can see the split marks here. As yeah. Matter of fact, there's a good example of it right here. You can see the three drill holes that were drilled by hand, I might add. So these are all drilled by hand. Here are the drill marks. And then they put wedges in there, steel wedges, and they kept hitting them until the rock split. Right. A lot of labor. And that's a lot a, of manual labor. That's another factor to think of. The rocks were bigger and heavier when they started with them. Yep. Yep. Now whether they split them up top where they got them, or they split them here is really unknown. Right. And you can see a good example of that over here on this wall. In fact, you can see all the split marks in that wall. Yeah. Very impressive. And you can see that this is extremely well made and tight, all done by Irish immigrants. Arguably some of the best wall builders ever. And it is absolutely perfect. You know, I bet you if we had one of those laser tools that we would find that this is extremely true. Square, square. Everything was laid out by line. Yeah. And by eye, but it's perfectly square. Another thought to take into consideration, the dimensions. They dug this hole out. Right. <laughs> There's evidence of backfill up top and on both sides. That's right. So they had to dig down. And again, where we are, the terrain is not good. So it's not like they were out in a field and said, oh, let's put the barn there, dig a hole. What they had to do to clear this land was probably painful. So all the rocks, well, they use them for construction. Right. And what they didn't have here, they, I'm sure, brought from the hillside, which isn't too far away. Nope. So why so grand? No, this was not part of a regular home site farm. This was part of a massive complex during the late 1800s. And this was just one of a multitude of buildings that were also extremely large for the day. So I'm actually standing directly in the middle of this thing, right? Look at that, you can't even see the walls barely on the outside. It has its own large-scale vegetarium going on big pines little pines all kinds of trees and shrubs and things so we hope you all enjoyed us sharing a little bit of our local history with you it's always fascinating to come down here and just look at this as I said to George no matter how many times we come down here it's always impressive always amazing with that See you soon.